the poor, the farmer, give the poor, the farmer, the farmer. Whoa, I better take this thing off to avoid that friendly fire, huh? Yeah, how, how about that? Now I'm just a helpless little pig. <laughs> Kill the boar! Nah! Kill the boar! Nah! Get ready for a good show. 20 minutes of pure heat? Then like and subscribe. For those of you who do not know what the boar is, let me give you a quick example. Actually, let the Prime Minister of Italy give you a quick example. Questo... Questo è un bambino che lavora in una miniera d'oro in Burkina Faso. Il Burkina Faso è una delle nazioni più povere del mondo. Per il Burkina Faso che ha l'oro, la Francia stampa moneta coloniale. In cambio pretende che finiscano nelle casse del tesoro francese il 50% di tutto quello che il Burkina Faso esporta. L'oro che questo bambino si infila in un cunicolo per tirare fuori finisce per lo più nelle casse dello Stato francese. Allora la soluzione non è prendere gli africani e spostarli in Europa, la soluzione è liberare l'Africa da certi europei che la sfruttano e consentire a queste persone di vivere di quello che hanno. There was a guy in France who took it upon himself to give Macron a quick slap in the face. Macron goes on to continue one hour later. The people are coming. The people are coming. And we're going to demonstrate to all ECOWAS countries and all those who are taking unpopular and inhumane mergers against the people of Niger, which is in the process of freeing itself from the yoke of colonization. It's no secret that Donald Trump doesn't like the French. He doesn't like Macron in particular. We have more and more of these fighters due to the situation today. This is why he's a great politician, because that was one of the greatest non-answers I've ever heard. <laughs> and that's okay. Because sometimes there was... And it's no secret that Donald Trump likes President Vladimir Putin. It's no secret either that Biden loves Macron. France and the United States have always stood together. And uh, I can say that uh, President Macron and I have stood together since we've worked together. And it's no secret that Biden hates President Putin. So who would Africa like to see leading the charge in the West? But getting rid of the deep state is not just an African problem, it's also an American problem, but it would be nice if people worked on the same team. We've seen it play out throughout the last century where countries are pinned up against one another, fighting for a piece of territory to gain more resources for its country's region. But now it's an entire continent. It's taking its authority. This is the type of unification that changes the world. And Africans, if they play their cards right, and it looks like they are, will hand the next generation the keys to prosperity to their children and their children's children. A history book full of victories and heroes fighting for a cause, visionaries that not only talk the talk, pray the prayers, walk the walk, and fight the good fight, but doing this against all odds. It's incredible. We've never seen anything like this in our lifetimes. You know, when you are brought up in a colonial system, you don't even respect the pain of the people that you have been colonizing and abusing for, for all this time. It's no longer the olden days. We are now in the new days, and it's not going to be politics as usual. Get ready for a show that's going to bring about 20 minutes straight of heat and give you the pieces of the puzzle that will destroy any 30-second TikTok clip or YouTube short Brainiac debate and turn any arguments against Africa's actions into a pillar of salt. Pillar of salt. So grab a drink, grab a snack. The only thing you got to pay here is attention. First, let's talk about the USA President Joe Biden. He won't say coup. He can't say coup. He's not allowed to. French President Macron is being shunned worldwide. Russia's President Putin deserves a medal and Africa isn't taking any orders from anyone anymore. They're giving them. How did it start and where are we now as the rest of the world joins the cause and gets behind the United Republic of Africa? It's got a nice ring to it. Africa isn't just showing up for the world stage, they're showing off. Because we want one Africa with one currency, with one military, with one judiciary, with one president, of the United Republic of Africa. The countries within the continent are unifying with one another and so tightly that the only things standing in their way are the moles, the infiltration leaders that planted by the system that are tied to the hip to France and the European countries and the US. We'll, we'll call them the imperialists. And I'm sure there's more to the story why Niger ousted Bazoum than just hanging out with Bill Gates, even though it's not a good look. 
when you're having private meetings with a man like Bill Gates, who, for one, is very into population control, and two, is very into climate change. And one fun fact you might not know is that one single flight from Bill Gates on his private jet emits more carbon than your car during an entire lifetime. So the rules for thee, but not for me, is kind of at play here in Africa. They're done with that. The West wants to see Africa fight among themselves. They need this to happen to gain back the leverage that they've lost. But if Africa can drain the swamp of pay-for diplomats, there'll be no stopping them. Finding out who the puppets are won't be too hard. Just follow the money and the friendships of the current leaders. Who's bowing to the system? Let's piece it together in a timeline. The Kamala visit, where she pushes LGBTQ on Africa, and every country involved in Africa are setting new laws. Then you jump into the Russia summit. Meanwhile, they begin a coup in Niger where other countries in Africa jump right in on Niger's side. Africa's new world order, election concerns. What's going on here? Africa's new mindset goes like this. Whatever England, America, or France tells them to do, do the opposite. We can work together to create the conditions for a peaceful transition, leading in a relatively short and reasonable time to general elections. But above all, to a better approach in our fight against terrorism and the other economic and social ills that are undermining Niger's development. And as an American, I want to encourage my fellow citizens here in the United States to stand up with Africa in their quest for one new United Republic of Africa. The Biden worldwide spread of the LGBTQ movement has just been demolished by Christians and not homegrown Christians in America but the Christians overseas that defeated the agenda. Why can't they do this in America? Because their refusal to stand up, their fear of cancellation, and their deep ties to the United States bureaucracy, which is exactly what Africa has just avoided. They avoided a bomb with a little help from Putin. Разрушение семьи, культурной и национальной идентичности, извращение, издевательство над, над детьми вплоть до педофилии объявляются нормой, нормой их жизни. А священнослужители, священников принуждают благословлять однополые браки. Да бог с ними пускать, что хотят, то и делают. Что здесь хочется сказать? Взрослые люди имеют право жить как хотят. Мы к этому так и относились в России, и всегда к этому будем так относиться. Никто в частную жизнь не вторгается, и мы не собираемся этого делать. Но хочется им сказать, ну посмотрите, извините меня, священное писание, главные книги всех других мировых религий. Там все сказано, в том числе то, что семья – это союз мужчины и женщины. Но и эти... Но и эти священные тексты подвергаются сейчас сомнению. Но вот, как стало известно, англиканская церковь, например, планирует, планирует, правда, пока только еще, рассмотреть идею гендерно-нейтрального Бога. Что тут скажет? Прости, Господи, не веду, что творят. Миллионы людей на Западе понимают, что их ведут к настоящей духовной катастрофе. Элиты, ну, прямо надо сказать, просто сходят с ума, и это, похоже, уже не лечится. Но это их проблема, как я уже сказал. А мы обязаны защитить наших детей. И мы сделаем это, защитим наших детей от деградации и вырождения. America can take notes on Africa's courage and follow in its footsteps. If Biden says it's a coup, America loses. Call it a coup, I dare you. Why can't Biden call it a coup? And why is he treading on this situation with such caution? Instead of calling it a coup, State Department Matthew Miller said on August 2nd, we're calling it an attempt to take power, which may be reversed. Why is the United States so hesitant to call a coup a coup? Why, why is it so hesitant to state the obvious? Calling Niger's military takeover a coup would put Washington in a difficult position. It would mean having to follow through with the spirit of the law and cut all military economic assistance to the Nigerian government. Also, the case may be that the U.S. is shying away from a coup designation in its own security interest. The U.S., after all, has approximately 1,100 troops stationed in Niger on three military bases, main goals to train, advise, and assist the Nigerian military 
on counterterrorism attacks. One base in Agadaz was built at a cost of $110 million and is Washington's main base for unmanned surveillance, intelligence, and reconnaissance flights against terrorist groups in the North and West Africa. The CIA runs drone operations from a separate base in Dirkou, 350 miles east of Agadez. Retaining control over these assets is no doubt a factoring into the ongoing U.S. interagency debacle on Niger policy. The Biden administration may also be declining to make a coup designation to maximize its flexibility as it supports a possible de-escalation. I mean, best case here being that Bazoum gets out and put back into office because Biden didn't recommend it. If Biden said, put him back in, well, we all know what Niger would do. They would do the opposite. <laughs> Events in Niger are still fresh, but the definitions for normal people are common sense. But Politicians are different breed. There's a dictionary definition of a coup, then there's Washington's definition as a coup, which is subject to change depending on the goals of their agenda.